So this was supposed to be a video of arctic foxes but then i made something that didn't really fit the arctic foxes anymore and i wanted to know have you guys ever built something and then later on decided yeah this doesn't really fit the original animal anymore let's find a new one and that's basically what happens in today's video because yeah we're building a himalayan bear habitat not an arctic fox habitat but let me know down below in the comments if you ever had a hiccup like that but with that being said hey everyone my name is poison blade i hope all of you are doing well today and today, as I said, no arctic foxes, Himalayan bears. But then I also decided, huh, I don't really need free time and a social life, so let's also build some backstage areas. So we have two topics today. Himalayan bears and staff areas. I want to say arctic foxes, but they've really just snuck into my brain and now they don't want to leave. God damn it, Bob, get out of my head. Anyways, with that being said... And before we actually start the video, don't forget to hit the like button because it does help out a lot with the algorithm. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more, even though the notification button is as broken as me. <laughs> anyway, let's get started with today's video. <laughs> so yes, this was supposed to be an arctic fox habitat, mainly on account of like the size of the area that this was in. And it was just... Like, I want more predators in Isu. I want more animals that if I throw you into the habitat with them, they would potentially see you as lunch. I'm not advocating to throw people in habitats, but that dark part of your mind probably thought of one person. And if you didn't think of one person, you're probably that person for someone else. But yeah, I'm not advocating throwing people into habitats. So, you know, just for legal reasons, let's get that out of the way. Poison Blade doesn't advocate murder. <laughs> But when it came to this habitat, I wanted another predator, but what I built was just kind of overkill for the arc foxes. Because I did this design in mind of like a honeycomb design, but really only worked well with 4 meter high walls. And yeah, 4 meter high glass walls. For an animal that's the size of a bunny. That's, well, the arctic foxes are larger than a bunny, I know, but the 4 meter high walls are kind of overkill for an arctic fox. So I had to switch gears and think like, <laughs> what animal can fit in this area and can actually also fit with this design of high walls? Wolves? No. Polar bear? Definitely not. I don't know why polar bear was ever on the list for this habitat because I think they still have the largest habitat requirements in game. And then I thought, penguins for a second? <laughs> I'm not joking, for some reason penguins were on the line of like, hey predator, <laughs> when they're not really, I mean they're predator to small fish, but not predator as in like, they could potentially kill you, they could peck you, like they could, you know, could do some damage, I mean, I'm somewhat terrified of swans, <laughs> I'm not terrified of swans, they just, they make me uncomfortable because I know what they can do, but then I thought, huh, Himalayan bears have a surprisingly small habitat requirement. I could put one of them in there. And yes, in this case, it's only one. <laughs> because when I put the Himalayan bear in there, I thought like, oh, you know, they have a very small habitat requirement. They're going to be small. No, he was not. He was chunky. He was fluffy. And yes, I wanted to pet him. I want to basically pet anything that can take my hand off. But then I also want to pet a badger, and I don't think badgers can take my hand off. They could potentially take a finger off. A lot of animals that are like, huh, you can't take my hand off? You're not worth my time. Lemurs are looking sad on the sideline. <laughs> but um, no, so I eventually put one Himalayan bear in there because they are solitary animals, so it would make sense to only have one in there. So maybe he's like part of a breeding program and whenever it's like mating season and there's an available partner for him, they would just ship that partner over to here. Because I would suspect that th this bear is part of a breeding program because the Himalayan bear is endangered, so... You know, I wanted to name the Himalayan bear. Like, that's the thing that I'm not right now thinking of. Like, we need to name some of the animals. But then, my videos are never really that much about the animals. It's just about chaos and just let's see what poison builds today. So, I don't know why I wanted to name the animal, but I feel like he feels like a Steve or a Dan. He feels like one of those. Like, you know, you, you always have people in mind when you think of a name. Or at least that's what I do. Whenever I think of a Steve, well, I for some reason just think of a wood uh, cutter, like a lumberjack. Yeah, this bear's a Steve. 
<laughs> anyway, so we're going to the design of this habitat and actually all habitats so far. I never really put them on the main road. And this actually has a very practical reason besides also looking pretty and me having like areas available to like landscape because there's going to be that like separation between the paths that's going to be necessary. There is a very practical reason for this as well. And that is be because I hate having like very like congested or just like for people to really block the main roads. So having all of the habitats on like separate paths from the main road means that the main road is going to be clear because if you want to watch the animals, you are going to go into those like separate paths, those secondary paths that lead you to the actual habitat. Yes, you can watch the animal from the main road, but you have a much better like look or have a much better viewing experience. Although a lot of the guests in Plants do still say that any of my habitats are awful because they can't look at the animal. And then I watch where they are looking at and they are looking through a wall, a solid wall. Yeah, sometimes the AI in Plants is not the best, but yeah, when it comes to the, just the entire setup of the habitat, I always like to just put them off of the main road just to make sure that the main roads are clear. And that also made me think like, huh, I don't have to build secret roads. Because you usually have like somewhat like, you know, basically backstage areas and like not really secret roads, but just roads for like staff vehicles. And with Eve Zoo, well, you don't usually have secret roads, but sometimes you need them if uh, you have like a zoo that's very like congested when it comes to the pots. But when it comes to Eve Zoo, don't really need that because the main roads are very clear most of the time. Only the Badger habitat and the Lemur habitat so far are more on the main roads. Which, when it comes to the badger app, that does sometimes lead to a little bit of congestion on that path because there's a staff or a talking point there. I might need to move this talking point to the small section that is not on the main road. Actually, large section of the main road. The badger app that only sits on the main road for like 5 meters. Smart poison puts this talking point on that small area there. But anyway, we, so when it came to the design of this habitat, I wanted contrast. I wanted something that would stand out. So that's where shape came into place. Because there's two ways that I usually think of when of thinking of contrast. And that's contrasting colors or contrasting shapes. So when it comes to Eve Zoo, having a more rectangular looking habitat right next to a round habitat to me makes that or makes both habitats stand out because there's those contrasts in shape. So with this habitat, because it has this honeycomb design, it is more rectangular. It still has that like slight vibe of roundness, but it stands out enough from everything else so far in Eve Zoo because every other habitat in Eve Zoo so far is rounded in some way. So when it came to this habitat, it was just like, hmm, yeah, it actually stands out a lot more. <laughs> that was like very dry and such, but that wasn't the original intent. This is like, sometimes I make it look like, oh, I have an entire idea of like, oh, this is how this is going to go. And this is how this is going to go. Most of the time I just find something on Pinterest. And then later on, it's like, huh, this actually adds a lot of contrast. Hey, this works out really well. So yeah, a lot of times it's not really like, thought of beforehand of like hey this works really well or like this adds that, that nice little bit of contrast a lot of times it's just like i like this design let's put it in there let's see how it works let's try to make it work sometimes that fails in case of like the links have that failing twice but sometimes it works really well very rarely i do plan beforehand this one wasn't because i had a design in in my mind first which I'm not going to say what it is because I want to use it for another habitat later on. Yeah, it was only a very last minute decision to make this habitat like the honeycomb shape that it is. But anyway, when it comes to the staff area, because we're eventually going to reach that. And this is like, I will mention this always just to be as honest as possible. One of the reasons that I like making the voiceovers as chaotic as possible is... Because I have fun that way. But the other reason is. I don't have to worry too much about the editing. <laughs> because if the voiceover is disconnected from the video in its entirety. I don't have to worry about the voiceover going out of sync with the video. So <laughs> it's partly because I have fun. Or mostly because I have fun with the voiceovers being as chaotic as they are. And picking like 
just topics that I want to talk about make styles are just really easy to make these voiceovers because I'm not like, oh, I need to talk about the habit. No, I can talk about whatever I want. I still want to rant about Game of Thrones, but then I've ranted about Game of Thrones so many times that I'm just like, I need to fit, like, make a video that kind of has like one little string attached to it, but then I also think I don't really need to because how the fuck were NFTs connected to Lynxes? I mean, there's probably NFTs of Lynxes. Again, don't get into NFTs, but yeah, that video was just like the voiceover was out of nowhere. But it was very fun to edit, also because I didn't have to worry about the audio going out of sync with the visual. But anyway, so when it comes to the staff areas, yeah, I basically just had one design that I just used. Because here's the thing when it comes to staff areas, they usually a little bit, you know, not as great looking as the guest areas. They are more function over looks. But when it comes to Eve 2, I'm just like, nope, I want the staff areas to look pretty, I want them to... Yes, still have that slightly functional feel to it, but still pretty. Because I will choose aesthetics over realism. Although I did use a lot more just like bricks and such when it comes to staff areas. Just because like, you know, it's slight realism. Little bit of realism. But mostly pretty. That's just the mantra of Eve Slight bit of realism, mostly pretty. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, when it comes to the staff area, I just use that. And um, eventually I will build fences because of course staff areas need to be kind of fenced off from the guest areas because you don't want guests wandering off into staff areas and uh, for some reason I had a lot of just like I was thinking a lot of like security <laughs> of like huh how am I going to stop a car or a truck from driving into the staff area like just ramming into there that's what he or she said or they anyone can say that but uh <laughs> yes uh, I'm Sure, Eve Zoo is not an evil corporation or anything, but for some reason, the guest uh, or the staff, like the, the staff gate, is four meters high <laughs> and solid steel. <laughs> and very much like, how can I make this unclimbable? There is a, like, there's a lock. There is also like a key card or just like a staff card scattered. And then there's also a camera. Eve Zoo is not an evil corporation. But all of the gates are completely black. <laughs> and very high. And very much of like, how the fuck do we keep you out of here? <laughs> and then all of the buildings are like, white and everything. And then staff area. Gates. Pure black. Four meters. What's going on behind the scenes in Eve Zoo? We will never know. Because we will shoot your ass. No. <laughs> I just had like this weird thing for security. But anyways, the staff areas, there, here's another topic that I need to discuss. Because with all of my other projects, I've been very much of like, I pride myself on building things myself. I, with, let's say, Kadam Sharafala, which just to say this right off the bat, those projects are on ice right now. Because, I mean, Eve Zoo just outperforms them by a mile. So there's always the thing of like, I can show you what I want to show you, but I mean, it's better to show you guys what you guys want to see. And, you know, most of the fun in my videos, or at least the most of the fun that I have with my videos, is the voiceovers. And I can still make chaotic voiceovers, even though it's not canon sharp. I can include far less references to murder in Eve Zoo, but I still... I sometimes think, am I the most, like, the or the least PG-friendly Planet Zoo creator? I mean, we also have Leaf. Well, he's actually kind of PG in his videos. Kind of. Sort of. Slightly? Maybe. Anyway, so when it comes to Eve's Zoo, the discussion point here is, yes, I'm using some blueprints from the workshop. Especially when it comes to vehicles. Like, I, my brain just doesn't know how to build vehicles. Like, it just doesn't connect. It's the same with, like, boats. Like, building those boats in Canal Bashar was just, like, that took a week. And here I have to decide, like, Yes, I could spend probably a day building an office chair while PS Vision Gaming has an office chair on the workshop already that I would probably be working on for an entire day to make something like that. So then, like this was very early on in Isu, I always decided, yes, I'm going to use workshop items. But if I do, I want to make it as transparent as possible. I don't want any people to think like, oh, poison built that when i haven't so whenever i use a 
blueprint from the workshop. I will put it in the description. Also, check out PS Vision Gaming. I'm very sad that he doesn't do voiceovers. But he is working on like this... I want to say Dutch city. Like if you want a city built in plans to look up PS Vision Gaming. But a lot of his stuff that he puts on the workshop is actually like tiny stuff. Or not tiny, but like that clutter. Like printers, office chairs, cabinets. He actually made an entire... Well, not entire, but like made things for like if you want to build a kitchen. He has made a lot of that. And so when it comes to using items from the workshop, I always... I will always try to keep it to a minimal. But there are just some things where it's just like I could spend three hours or an entire day building this thing. Or I could spend the entire day building a habitat. Because building something large in Plant Zoo is far easier, I would say, than building something tiny. I hit my desk. And of course it rumbles and just... I hope it's not that audible, but uh, at least I didn't hit my mic this time. But when it comes to building something small in Plant Zoo, just because none of the items are really geared towards building something small, it's just far more difficult because you have to be very, very creative with the items then. So whenever it comes to like an office chair or a cabinet, because there's some things that are going to have interiors with Eve Zoo, well, actually a lot of things so far have interiors in Eve Zoo. I am much more of like building habitats, building large buildings. And when it comes to building, let's say, an office chair, my mind just short circuits. And then when it comes to vehicles, it's just like, yeah, that's... Um, kudos to everybody who is building vehicles in Planet 2 and making them actually also really look good. Most of them look really good. And it's just like, how? Just no. <laughs> how? So, yeah, that's just... just when it comes to using buildings or blueprints from the workshop, I will be as transparent as possible when it comes to that. I still pride myself on making, like, let's say 99% of EVE myself, making things custom. And there's some vehicles that I'm going to do myself. I have actually made something of a vehicle myself. The rest of the build isn't finished yet. This is again why. Whenever I ask you guys... Oh, what do you guys want to see in the next video? It's not completely true because usually I've already started working on what I want to do or what I'm building for the next video. So I basically have to ask you guys, hey, what do you guys want to see next week? Because then I can take it into consideration when I'm saying, hey, what do you guys want to see in the next video? Yeah, that's kind of a lie because I've probably already started building on it. I might incorporate some of your guys' ideas, but usually it should be a better question. What do you guys want to see next week and not next video? But anyway, so we're going to the staff areas because we've probably by this point reached it. Again, the voice servers are so disconnected, but it's just easier to edit and more fun because I can talk about random crap like NFTs. Again, don't get into that because it's going to implode. Actually, I want to... <laughs> I saw this and I was just like mind baffled. Like just there's people that want to make NFTs of foods. Why? <laughs> like you can't eat the crap. The picture is probably not really connected because you are actually just buying the receipt to like a web page and the image of like the food or anything is just on that web page but you're not actually owning the picture or whatever but like the nft of food why <sighs> but yeah it's just it's such a weird thing and then there's also like some crypto scams and just like again watch josh strife hayes video on F nfts he well i basically kind of copied his explanation very badly <laughs> for the last video but if you don't know what nfts are watch this video he explains it a far better and also just watch his videos because it's fun but uh, yeah the nfts it's just it's such a dumpster fire and people are not realizing it's a dumpster fire or they're just ignorant to how much of a dumpster fire it is and how little sense it makes there's also this thing of like what was it that like it was like a supermarket i target maybe i don't know no not target it was one of those like north american stores amazon i don't know but they made like a virtual reality or virtual shop. And then at the end it was like, hey there, the items that you bought are going to be brought to your car. So you went to an actual shop, put a VR thing on, 
and sat there in your car going into the shop. I know I'm a social hermit, but even I just go out to buy stuff. I find it still fun to like go shopping and such. Why would I go to the shop, get into or just stay in my car, put on VR glasses and go into the shop that way? Why? <laughs> like, great, you made the annoying experience of shopping, which is going to the shop, and made that the experience. And then you're just like, you're just sitting like a jackass in your car with VR glasses on going into the shop that's like five meters away from you. Why? It's such a weird thing like right now with technology and such. Again, I am a hermit. I would like, I love not having to talk to people when it comes to like going to McDonald's, which I haven't actually done in half a year, but like they have like the in the computer interfaces, which like by the door, you can just like type in what you want and then they give it to, to you. I mean, you still have to go to the register and such, but um, you don't have to like, like this thing that I always dislike about like ordering food when it comes to like, you know, McDonald's and such, where they have like the menus above like the counter. It's always like, you know what you want to get. But as soon as you reach the counter, you just mind, like your mind goes blank and you're just like, uh, I want a fry, a, a burger, no, I want a nugget, no. Why is that? <laughs> Why do, does your brain just com go completely blank when you reach the counter? So yeah, use, like, techno using technology there actually helps a lot because you avoid those awkward situations. Virtual shopping is so weird. I'm not talking about like shopping on the internet, like that's, I mean, that's normal, especially with like COVID and such, but going to a shop, sitting in your car, putting VR glasses on to virtually go into that shop. Why? So weird technology right now. Here we also have the guest or the staff gate that I talked about that um, is kind of just uh, very secure for some reason. I had a big thing with security in when it came to the staff area. And the entire design of the staff area is just like, it's rectangular and it's just the roof that just goes into the ground. You can make a lot of buildings very similar and very just, I wouldn't say easy, but just make it blend in together well. And that's what you want with the staff area. You want to kind of make it blend into the background and not make it pop out like you would do with habitats. So that's the entire idea of the staff areas is to make the buildings simple, pretty, but also just completely forgettable. Because that's how you want staff areas to be. Pretty, but forgettable. Because you don't want the guests to kind of linger their eyes on staff areas or backstage areas. But that's it for today's video. I have no idea what we've talked about because that's usually what happens with these voiceovers. <laughs> Sometimes I, well, a lot of times I make a voiceover and like 15 minutes after I've st stopped talking, I'm just like, what the hell did I talk about? But yeah, we've talked about the design of the Himalayan bear habitat. We've talked about, for some reason, NFTs came into the lineup today as well again. And we've talked about how I want to be as transparent as possible when using workshop items. So that's it for today's video. Let me know what you thought about today's video. And with that being said, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a like and subscribe button. If you want to see more, there's a notification button. But that one is just as broken as today's reality, it seems. And then I wish you guys an amazing day. See ya!